opposite of every job you ever dreaded having. So when a young person thinks about all the awful jobs that would involve so much slavery and humiliation, the messenger is just the, the logical opposite of it. How did I start? How did I get into this? Okay, um, I wanted to go to Mexico on my bike, right? And uh, I figured, well, I'll work as a bike messenger, you know, and get my strength and endurance through there. So this was 10 years ago. I've never been to Mexico. I still want to go. We look funny. We're, we're always dirty and sweaty. And riding our bikes, of all things, you know. We're getting paid to exercise and be outside and have a good time. Hi, I need to get a package picked up. Well, I drifted here on my way to Seattle, where I had a friend uh, living up in Seattle who uh, worked in a bookstore. And I was going to go up and join him after visiting this place for a while. And I just, the, the city just kind of grew on me, and I didn't want to leave. Uh, uh, Gardner. So I got a, I got a job Thanks. as a messenger, uh, temporarily, I thought. Uh, you know, it just sort of tied me over until I moved somewhere else. Uh, and I liked it so much and turned out to be so good at it, in fact, that I decided that it might be worth sticking around and, and seeing how it worked out. We are the servants of stress. We are, we are the angels of uptightness in the downtown. Everyone that has to have everything done immediately because they just have to. They just got to have it done right now. And if not, the whole world's going to end, so they call a messenger. And so we're the vehicles by which those people conduct business. There is no way of getting something done faster. As a secretary for a real estate development firm, I have to send out a lot of packages and we use messengers because it's really the most efficient method. They're very quick, both in response time to your company and in the delivery to the other place that you need it delivered to. For the most part in the financial district, we're stuck wearing white shirts and ties with stupid patterns on them. And I kind of like the quality that bicycle messengers have with their clothing. Uh, coming into a corporate world um, and showing a real contrast to like the day-to-day -day sort of you know, work drag people have to wear. These, well, well, for sliding along cars. A little of this, a little of that. Like yeah. if you're riding in between two muni buses, sliding along cars in real tight spots, sliding along buildings, uh, falling down, they come in handy for lots of things. You can see they've been through lots of use. <laughs> Being a messenger seven years, I've fallen about 10, 15 times. I've never once landed on my head. Always my knees and elbows get hurt. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with though. what I know. <laughs> Most of them are assholes, including my brother. I mean, I had two brothers that were bike messengers, and all they basically did was run people down. <laughs> They're assholes, <laughs> and that's the bottom line. The San Francisco Police Department does not have any philosophical problem with bike messengers, either as individuals, uh, as a group of individuals, or their operation. Uh, they, they perform a very viable and, and vital service for the downtown business and, and corporate community and we certainly uh, support that. Uh, however, they do have <clears throat> excuse me, a rather notorious reputation for sometimes uh, actually trans when they're in transport on their bicycles, uh, doing so in a very hazardous fashion. And I, I've never really gotten into their mentality or their uh, beliefs in, uh, in life, but they just seem to have kind of a carefree type attitude and they can do what they want. The problem with cops is that they're cops and we're not. Employment make it absolutely necessary for, for us, us to, to break, break the law, law at least dozens of times every day. <laughs> they just don't, and yeah. Our, they can't understand that. Every move is calculated. 
Every move is like, you know, yeah, I mean, because you got to protect your skin, there, you know? I mean, hours. you really it's do like, have to yeah, protect your like skin. So, yeah. Although it may look like you're being really careless, you're not being careless at all. You're calculating every second of what you're doing. Why do I do this? I don't know. Um, other jobs that I've had have been too safe. I guess. It doesn't mean I'm, you know, I crave danger, it's just, it, it makes me feel really good at the end of the day, you know, uh, having come that close to uh, something called death, right? Um, but you get good at it, you know, you don't taunt death or anything like that, okay? Uh, it's a rush. This is like walls of metal and exhaust and, and large rubber <laughs> tires that can kill you. This is where they always have the wakes for dead messengers. You sit here and drink and talk about the person until the cops come and bust you. Especially in the last two years, a lot of people have been lost. And they should be remembered. Their voices aren't being heard, and some of them were pretty outspoken people who had a lot to say. But what's it really matter, I mean, whether it's on the job or not, it, how many hours are you on your bike? Sooner or later, you're going to get hit. One of those times, you're going to get killed. Does it matter if the time that you're on your bike and you get killed is when you're at work or not? It's the same thing. You put yourself out there that much time. Cars are the enemy. That's the way I look at it, you know? There's, I, I just think there shouldn't be any cars in the financial district, you know? It's too hectic already. But I don't, I don't think that's ever going to happen. The fact that messengers confront dying on a day-to-day <clears throat> -day basis at the hands of, of for really no reason, uh, the, the absurdity of risking your life to deliver uh, photo reproductions of advertisements every day does, does not escape us. And it, it sort of adds to, the, to the, the surrealistic flavor of it, of risking your life to deliver a message deliver some slides, deliver a legal document, to deliver a, a signed invoice or a, a box or it doesn't doesn't escape us. It's pretty absurd. These are messenger bikes. Real messenger bikes. They have baskets. They keep someone from throwing a door open in front of you. Sir, what are you doing on my bike? I'm gonna stick it in this tree! <laughs> you can put pegs in it. You can put your old lady in it. You can use a trash basket. You're gonna get it, Wheels. Yeah, like this member dispatchers. That's a dispatcher. That's the lowest form of life. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, these critters were around before these wimps. <laughs> these gutless wonders without any baskets at all. There's four of them here. Yeah! About time someone actually hit the target big enough! Yeah, I needed a good bag, so I took the money and I bought a sewing machine and a bunch of fabric, and then I was making bags. And they have reflective tape on them, so maybe someone's life was saved. And they have this neat Velcro. And you put them on your back like this. And uh, has a waist strap. So if you have something heavy, you can drop the load down to your waist. 
before I started doing my bags, maybe 10% of the messengers in the city had some sort of bag and everybody else was using baskets. The majority of the messengers now have bags and maybe 10% use baskets. A lot of people who are individualists uh, are attracted to messengering. As a matter of fact, that is the messenger in general, is the individualist or the eccentric. And often, the individualist and the eccentric also happens to be an artist. Bike messenger art, in the last, what, 10, 15 years, we've seen a lot of that, right? A lot of bike messenger bands, you have bike messenger poets, you have bike messenger uh, f filmmakers, animators, visual artists. It's a fusion of all these things. My friend Brian's uh, store on Divisadero, uh, I've known him for a while and I uh, do window displays and uh, little, little signs and doodads in the store and trade for comics. Basically, Brian tells me that he's going to have a signing with a various comic book artist or uh, a new book will be coming out and uh, I have to come up with some sort of display with those characters. This is the Mass Press version 2. We go for mostly fun stuff. You can see by the cover, we got a little radio here explaining what we got in. A little bit of everything. Food, music, crossword, games, fun, toys. A little graphic stuff, some more poetry, some of the scoops we scored up, bar reviews because well, we all drink well. <laughs> Mercury Rising is um, uh, this magazine, which we just put out. It's by and for and about bike messengers. We want everyone to have a chance to publish their stories and poems and uh, write articles, especially about anything that they're interested in that relates to bikes or uh, what bike messengers do when they're not at work or anything that bike messengers might even be interested in. It's a, a need to be free in every aspect of your life, you know, all day long, not just like when you get off work, but like, you know, your whole job, eight to five, and then when you get off work, go do your band thing, it's all about freedom, it's all about expressing yourself. You're already free if you're an artist, you know, you're, you're already making that choice, you know, even if you don't make any money out of it, you're still going to be an artist, you know, because it's this inherent need, you know, it's part of your being, you know, that has to do that, you know. Uh, the bike messengering as an element complements it, you know, all day long, you know, you're, you're, you're in the wind, you know, you could die any second, you could really live any second, you know what I mean? Uh, it's that way. Bike, bike messenger party. I'm a bike messenger. Almost everybody in my band are bike messengers. All the other bands are bike messengers. 
All these people here are bike messengers, and uh, it's a community. We all stick together and try and support each other's problems. You know, we don't make that much money, and uh, this is the only way we can do it. If somebody has a problem, we all we all come together and, and help out. I came here originally because this is where everybody would gather on Friday nights and um, it was just a really fun place to meet up with your comrades and talk about the week and whatever and then I, I still come to Harvey's because he gives me credit which is really cool. You know, I run out of money and I need to eat, and he feeds me. Oh yeah, we, I give them credits. You know, like this, they owe, you know, they pay me on a payday. See, like this, all that, see, yeah. See, same thing, yeah. See, uh, most of them, they, uh, when they get paid. How, how does that work again? You pull that down and show us how it works? Well, okay, it just, uh, each, each uh, individual signs, uh, you know, ticket, and uh, whatever they owe, and they want more, and I just add on to it. Just like that, and uh, most of them pay me on a payday. So some uh, owes more, some owes less. You know, depends on how much money they have. They don't have money, they come and see me, and uh, <laughs> so it's more or less uh, charging it. Yeah, most of the messengers, they um, kind of live from uh, day to day, that's all. So, you know, they get paid today, they be, all their money be gone by tomorrow. So I give them credit. So they, uh, next week when they uh, get paid, they pay me, uh, they pay me up. Messengering is a profession for the disenchanted, but not necessarily the disillusioned. Not the people that have thrown their hands up in the air and, and are quitting, but more or less the people that, that really are looking for another way to live. Well, this is to help fund uh, our project over there. This is an, a, based on a photograph of a genuine Afghan bike messenger. And uh, this project is to help uh, Afghan amputees relearn bicycle riding. The amputee puts his good foot in the toe clip and is able to spin the bicycle, spin the uh, chain wheel just with one leg. Like a lot of people, I like to go on to something uh, beyond messengering. Uh, but it's so much fun <laughs> that uh, it's so much fun that um, it's hard to find something that you want to do that's uh, more rewarding. I've always had a bicycle, and it's just a matter of it never goes away. You know, I've been doing this for so long, and I've been riding bikes for more than half my life, so it just comes natural now. You know, I'm, I'm practicing all the time. I practice when I go to the store. I practice at work. I practice on the weekends. I mean, this is why I have this job because it just gives me a chance to practice and also make money while I'm doing it. You know, so it's, it's, I'm killing two birds at one stone. You know, basically. <laughs> When I was messengering, I noticed a lot of um, discrimination from dispatchers. Dispatchers tend to give men the good tags. So nobody really talks much about it. But I decided to do something about it. Not yet. Go to 55 Numa first, Bay Area queer women. And uh, wait a minute. Lickety split. Well, when I was trying to think of a name, that would let people know that we're all women messengers. I thought I would want something kind of catchy, kind of sexual, like uh, fast women. But then a friend of mine said that people might think it was an escort service, you know? And they'd be wanting us to deliver all kinds of things that we couldn't necessarily deliver. 
So um, then I thought of Lickety Split one day, it just popped into my head. Lickety Split. But now everyone thinks, oh, you must be a bunch of dykes or something. So I don't know. I guess it ended up having the, uh, the proper effect, which is make people giggle and want to call just to hear me say Lickety Split. We were sitting out back, just talking about it. We said, okay, let's, let's do it. We got to start our own company. King Courier. It's something we've been talking about for a long time. It was always, you know, if we had our own messenger company, we'd do this and we'd do that. It'd all be different. So by the time it came around that we actually had to start a company because we had no choice, we already pretty much knew, we'd already discussed everything pretty much the way it would be. So we got all the clients we could. We gave them one of our, one of our home phone numbers. We told them that was the number that was going to be our company. And uh, the guy whose phone number it was, Partey King, he, he, was, uh, he was on vacation at the time. He didn't even know until <laughs> he came back like a week later. And he didn't have a job and that his new company was at his house. <laughs> I didn't like the big messenger services and I wanted to compete against them out of malice <laughs> because I genuinely didn't like them, thought they were run poorly, thought they treated their people like dirt, thought they were awful. So out of maliciousness, I started my own company to a certain extent too. And since we're expanding, I'll need more than one business line. I'll need several business lines. You can bring me a traveler. Gotta go. Hold on. Hello. Yeah, we all help each other out. We, mm -hmm. couldn't, we couldn't be stealing stuff from each other because we all we help each caught. other. Yeah. We get caught. We get caught. Yeah, because yeah. we're right next we're to each other. We're all next to each other. No, I think yeah. what's great about us all being together is that um, we cooperate and we help each other because we're small. We need to help each other. We really can't afford to compete. You know, so each of us takes the other one's overflow. And that way, the, our customers always get good service. Right. Yeah, and so and we're, it's up to each of us to get our own customers, and hopefully we'll get them from the big corporations. We don't have to get them, you know, from each other. We're riding to Guerneville on the Russian River. And we camp out up there for the weekend and then ride back. I guess it's about 180 miles, more or less, round trip. And we end up going Bohemian Highway, which is really nice. And we come in the back way. Um, like, what is it? I don't have a watch. Um, 20 minutes. 20 minutes or something, and then we leave. Last minute adjustments. Excellent. So this is sort of like the Tour de France of uh, bike messengers, I guess. I went last year and I'm going this year and I'll probably go next year and maybe even the year after that. And so this is kind of like, you know, a bonding thing. It's like, you know, like I've met so many people through this ride and become good friends because, you know, hey, they got a flat, you come by and fix it, you know, and, you know, help them out. It's just, you know, it's like a friendship thing because, you know, I don't know. That's it's just a friendship thing, you know. I like to think as, as us messengers in general as being lifestyle artists and being people who are trying to construct a viable reality. Uh, and it's sort of a subconscious, no, not subconscious, unconscious group endeavor where each person contributes his own uniqueness to a, a reshaping of the whole working class idea. And all sorts of people become messengers. And all of us are very different to a certain extent. Some of us are very different. And by being messengers, we've all found some sort of common ground to get along with one another that maybe wasn't there before. You know, the suburban punk rocker, uh, the urban street kid, the skinhead, the black guy from the projects down on Hunter's Point, uh, the cholo from down in the Mission District, the rich kid, the college student, uh, all these people. Uh, gay guys, lesbians, all are together are messengers and get along together really very well and have learned to put aside their differences which would keep them from ever meeting each other, knowing each other, or even speaking to each other in some cases.
outside of that profession. I don't think I'll ever want to be in any of these buildings. I'd rather just take care of, of life in my own terms, you know? Once a messenger, always a messenger. I don't think you can ever stop that job. It's an attitude, not a job. My father said to me, Son, you can't ride a bike all your life. And you know, I always love it whenever he tells me something I can't do because I always do. Bike messengers have got to be one of the most skilled athletes known to mankind. <laughs> 